following is a presentation of KSL Sports. Hello, Cougar Nation. Hand off middle. First down. Touchdown! And listen to the Cougar Nation. Every Monday night, we break down the Cougars' last game and look ahead to next week. Cougar Nation, brought to you by Central Bank. Here's BYU insider Mitch Harper and Matt Biamonte on Utah's legacy home of the Cougars, KSL News Radio. What a night it was in Tempe for better and for worse, and we'll be breaking it down for the next hour here in Cougar Nation. We were both there. We were on the sidelines for that chaos at the end of that football game, and there's a lot of thoughts, and we're going to share them all for this next hour. But this show's for you, Cougar Nation. We want to get your thoughts as well on that game, 801-575-8255. And also, we want your thoughts on this question. Do you want to see a rematch, BYU and Arizona State? Do you want to see these two teams who have a a history together, back in the whack, reunite for a Big 12 championship. You you need some help to get there. We'll we'll break this all down, Mitch, but can't think of a a better show to just figure out and get all the feelings and emotions out from such a crazy game down in Tempe. Yeah, BYU now 9-2 on the season, 6-2 in Big 12 play after falling to Arizona State 28-23 in Tempe. Let's dive in, Matt, to our takeaways. Cougar Nation, takeaways. Mitch and Matt analyze BYU's last week of play and what it means for the next week. I got to say, Matt, that post-game, or not really post-game, but the end of the game, the storming of the field, that was wild. We were both there on the field, saw that, and no student, mind you, that ran onto that field from ASU had any idea that one second was possibly going to go on the clock. They were all floored when... Media members were telling them, hey, you got to get off the field. Cam Scadaboo's telling them to get off the field. Uh, they were they had no comprehension that that was possible. That was a wild scene in Tempe, and it was disappointing that BYU came up short. My takeaway number one from that game, though, Matt, with how much was on the line in that contest and being one of the biggest games of the Kalani Satake era and maybe for BYU football in the 21st century, and they just flat out no-showed in the first half. no showed that was discouraging 21 to 3 they were down I couldn't believe it I was so confident going into that game that BYU was going to put their best foot forward and you could say in the second half they did in stretches but I just thought that floored me how BYU lacked any sort of physicality in the first half you can't tell me that Arizona State is that much better than BYU like we've been watching these games throughout the entire course of the season BYU is a really good football team. Arizona State's a good football team. But the way that BYU showed up in that first 30 minutes, man, they dug themselves too big of a hole, and it proved too big because they couldn't get back and ultimately get back out on top and win this game. Uh, that was just really discouraging to me how they just showed up flat. Very surprising, too, to hear players and coaches today talk about how great of a week of practice they had last week, one of the best weeks of practice they ever had, and yet that whole first half – They were entirely flat. I'm going to give you a positive takeaway, though, Mitch. I came away very impressed with this team's grit, their resilience, their maturity. That was a tough environment. And and those were difficult conditions to come back in, considering the way Arizona State was running the football in that first half where Scadaboo had three touchdowns and almost 100 yards rushing in the first half. For them to dig deep, find a way back and to have two separate opportunities to win that football game, I thought that was really impressive. Now, there were way too many mistakes, and we'll get to this later, to have overcome that 21-3 to deficit. But other BOU teams, I think, in this situation would have folded. And for them to fight back the way that they did, if they get an opportunity to go to the championship game, and I don't know if they will, but if they do, I think they would win that game. I think they are... They are really battle-tested. Unfortunately, you just can't play one half of bad football and expect to win these games, and and that's what cost them. And when you're vying for a championship in a power conference league or any conference championship at this point of the season, you've got to play a full 60 minutes. And these teams are too good in the Big 12 to where you take a half off or don't show up in a half – 
you're going to get exposed, and it's going to be too big of a hole. And, you know, BYU's got Houston coming up this Saturday night at 8-15 uh, to close out the regular season. BYU's going to be a sizable favorite against Houston, but still, you you, sh- you show, have a no-show and a half, that could get real interesting quick. And we've seen that against Kansas, and we saw it this past weekend against Arizona State. You know, an- another takeaway for me, Matt, bring the tempo offensively. BYU yes, just operates at a higher level offense on the offense with more tempo. Coming into the game, they were 105th nationally in plays per game, so a slower-paced team. Arizona State was more middle of the pack, 55th nationally coming into the game. But BYU, you just see the, the difference in how they knew they had to level up that tempo because they had such a big hole. The offense was operating at a much higher level. It felt like Jake Retzloff was a lot more comfortable. They had 20 points in the in the second half, and that was notable because from the end of the UCF game, fourth quarter, Utah, Kansas, first half against Arizona State, it's about 11 quarters. BYU had, what, three touchdowns in that stretch? And then in the second half against ASU, they had three touchdowns. Maybe it's just easy to point to the tempo. Maybe ASU took a little bit of the foot off, off the gas a bit. But I thought BYU's offense looked a lot better in that second half with a little more tempo. Aaron Roderick said this a lot this season, Mitch, that that Jake is probably the best two-minute quarterback he's ever coached. Today, he said this is the best two-minute offense I've ever coached. Utilize that, then. That needs to be the standard. If that's what's going to put points on the board, then run that up-tempo because it felt like the floodgates finally opened after such a long lull. And it was because of the tempo offensively. Another one of my takeaways, Mitch, is Jake is missing too many opportunities to win football games. Hmm. Specifically in his intermediate to deep passes, the Utah game, the Kansas game, and this game. Numerous throws missed that would have changed the football. Give me go back to that Kansas game. He had Darius running a post. He hits that. It's an easy touchdown. They probably win that football game. In this game, in the second half alone, he and he Jake played good football in the second half. He played his best football in weeks in the second half, but he could have hit JoJo Phillips for what would have been a walk-in touchdown. We good were on point. the field at that point in the fourth quarter. Uh, the visitors let us go down to the field and enjoy some, some of the fourth quarter, which is fun to get up close and on a game like this one where the fans rush the field, it gets a little crazy, but... That is an easy throw to make. There was no one around. Just fit it in there and get it to JoJo. Couldn't do it. Uh, and there were other throws in this. That His last interception was a missed throw. Hit Darius Lassiter accurately, and he gets some yards after the catch, and who knows what happens. There's just – Jake – Jake has done a lot of great things this year. He, is, I think he has far exceeded most people's expectations. Because the expectations were very low. Fair. Very low. They were low. For sure. I mean. But, he he has, but he's got nine wins. I mean, that. Jake is. Jake, I think, has earned all of our respect, and he's a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback. Because a great quarterback would have made some of these throws, and you win those football games. Jake's got to find a way. Because at the start of the year, think about that long touchdown pass to Darius against Baylor. The long touchdown pass to Joe. He was hitting these throws to start the year. He hasn't been hitting them the last couple of weeks, and that's hurt this offense. BYU, again, falls to Arizona State 28-23. to This was Kalani Satake after uh, that deep hole that BYU put themselves in. That's just, I think you, when you put yourself in the hole too much, it's going to be hard to crawl out of it, especially against really quality teams like Arizona State. And we found that out. It's a tough lesson to learn. But give them credit; they they deserve to the win. They got it, and we we have to we have to learn from this and and get better. They do have to get better from this, and it's got to be something that's learned quick because BYU still has a path to the Big Twelve Championship, and that's why we asked on today's question for Cougar Nation: Would you want to see a BYU versus Arizona State rematch in the Big Twelve Championship? The Cougars need to obviously win their game over the Cougars in Red Houston. Then they need help from either Arizona to knock off Arizona State or Iowa State falls to Kansas State. So it's in play. It's possible there, and BYU maybe could get a rematch against the Sun Devils. Let's take our first time out. This show is sponsored by Central Bank, voted best bank and mortgage in Utah Valley. Visit us online at cbutah.com. We'll get to your calls. We see some people loaded up on the phone lines. We'll get to your calls and your texts next here on Cougar Nation.